On September 16th, we witnessed the launch of the US-50-301 Kent Island Ramp Management Pilot Program in an effort to address westbound traffic concerns with motorists traveling towards the Bay Bridge using our local roadways and ramps. The public has had many burning questions about this pilot program, so Commissioner Jim Moran and Commissioner Chris Corcorino stopped by to make a video series to answer all of your questions. This pilot program that we are uh, incorporating is just that it's a pilot. We want to see what happens when we do certain things to the traffic and also to allow, you know, when we close these ramps and more specifically the Route 8 ramp to 50 West, by closing that ramp, it allows traffic to not slow down and we are envisioning that helping with the traffic getting across the Bay Bridge. If you think traffic is bad now, it's going to get worse. It's been getting worse. I've been here for 35 years, I know, and it's going to continue to get worse based on the projections that we've seen. It's not going to be an easy process because we're, we're not just, we're dealing with changing travel behaviors. Mm -hmm. Some people use navigation software to get to the side roads. Some people have weekend homes down in Delaware or Ocean City and they take the side roads mm -hmm. automatically. It could take a while for them to, to recognize that the signs that say stay on 50 mean stay on 50 because you're going to have to turn around. We have to change those behaviors. And uh, we, we encourage everybody and anybody that has a great idea, pass it on to us because you know we're, we're not sitting here with closed ears. We are uh, uh, analyzing everything and anything we can. Thank you. Thank you. Initially, you have one thing, right? Waze, Google, uh, other navigation apps, they direct people to the Route 8 ramp. Why, and that's why people jump on the side roads. That's sort of the goal because that helps them skip everything. If that ramp is closed, then the navigation software does not reroute them, right? So the, the algorithm tells them, stay on 50, it's quicker. Some people have asked, well, why can't we have a left turn onto the Route 8 exit from, so people in Southern Kent Island can then get up and turn left. If you do that, the ramp is still open, right? You might have one part closed, but it's still open and the navigation software will still route people there. If you were to tell them it's closed and it's not, the navigation software will pick up when people are using that ramp and then it will say, okay, well, this is open now. We're gonna reroute them that way. So by closing the Route 8 ramp and, and uh, detouring those that would use it back to Castle Marina, which is only 1.6 miles away from the Route 8 overpass, it's going to add on a no traffic day six and a half minutes. On a heavy traffic day, it might add 10 minutes. And we understand that. And, and we are hoping that that is something that our residents will say, I can live with. Another question that some people have said is, well, why not just close all of the exits um, to get off of Route 50 other than Route 8, right? So you can get off from Route 8. The problem with that. Um, is if we close all of the exits, right? When we're closing exits, when the state closes their exits, it's not close it for the beach traffic, but not close it for locals. It's closed to everybody, closed for one, closed for all. So you wouldn't be able to get off of any other exit. And then you're gonna have another backtracking incident where people are still gonna try to be getting off wherever they can to take those side roads and use that exit. So that won't work with the plan and you're still having a lot of other cars in the traffic. What we're trying to do is separate the beach traffic onto Route 50 and allow the locals to use the side roads. You can't restrict the exits, as we talked about earlier, uh, to just locals, right? It, the exit has to be open for everybody. And, and this is something that the federal government has been asked about. Say, hey, if we just did locals only, is there any problem with that? And Federal Highway said, State of Maryland, if you want to do that, we will cut off all of your funding to all of your state road projects, right? The state is not going to do that. Um, so in other words, it's unlawful to do that. You cannot differentiate your tolls for locals passing through traffic. And, and on that, it, it, let's say you do do this, right? Let's say that, that MDT had decided they would put in these tolls to put it in. Some people have said, well, but the bridge, I, I pay less than everybody else when they go across the bridge because I'm on a bridge plan. So yeah, you can get a reduced plan for a commuter. So if you have 20 passes, you can go for a reduced rate, but that is available to everybody, right? So somebody who lives in Montgomery County and they're coming from the beach, they could sign up for it. So if your thought was, well, we'll charge $200 for somebody who is going from the beach to go there. Then locals have to pay something, right? So let's say they pay a dollar under some discounted plan. 
that person from Montgomery County, PG County, they can buy that discounted plan too. And you would, you would spend 20 bucks for one trip to save on the 200. So it wouldn't work. Can't be free for Queen Anne's County and charge everybody else. That's right. just illegal. That's it? Yeah, absolutely. It We are not targeting Ken Island. Unfortunately, they are closest to the bridge. I mean, they are affected by the Route 8 ramp, and we understand that. You know, this is not us saying, look, you know, let's, let's go down there and, and uh, cause all this havoc just for the southern uh, Ken Island residents. That's not the case at all. We are looking towards Graysonville. We are looking towards Chester. We are trying to come up with a plan that allows the traffic to stay on Route 50, stay off our, our side of roads and our access roads, so all of our citizens can move about and, and take care of their, what they need to take care of in their daily lives. Right, so the ultimate plan is to have ramp management from Ken Island all the way to the outlets so that the roads are open for the locals to move around and a disincentive for anybody who's not doing local business to build user side roads. Mm -hmm. That's gonna help our local businesses. We hear from the local businesses right. about how difficult it is for them when beach traffic fills over onto Route 18 all the way from, from the Bay Bridge up to Queenstown and they have no customers coming in. So part of this is to help the local businesses and allow people to get from where I am on Route 8 to Safeway and back in, you know, 15 minutes versus an hour and a half or to be able to get to church or, you know, to be able to go, to, you know, if you want to go to bring your kid to Sweet Frog or you want to go to the Narrows and you want to have something to eat for dinner, be able to do that and not sit in an hour and a half of traffic. This will help local businesses. It's going to be bumpy getting there. Well, this plan has been since 2018 with, with the Beach to Bridge plan. It was turned down by the state for years. Uh, now, with the traffic volumes growing, they are, they are doing their part to help us trying to manage this traffic. We are doing town halls. We're going to have at least two town halls in November. So in November, look, look for that. We want to hear your input on this. Yeah, and, that, and that's the point. The, the pilot program is to gather this data and let the citizens see how this is actually implemented so we can get some positive feedback on how can, how can we improve this? You know, maybe some of the feedback we get is, and I'm expecting that this is probably gonna happen, is instead of 10 to eight for Route 8, mm -hmm. we can probably be a smaller window yeah. on that, right? But if you, if you were to start the pilot program and say, it's gonna be 12 to two and you gotta go to 231 days, someone's gonna say, well, why did you go a half hour over? Yeah. Or why did you start? We already saw someone complain, why did you start five minutes earlier? Right. You need to do a longer window so you have the time to, to research the program and then say, okay, what are the traffic numbers doing? What can we do to, to shorten this window of time so that the plan has the least impact as possible? We're not trying to inconvenience anybody. We don't want to inconvenience anybody, but finding a plan that's legal and viable, uh, we don't know of one that doesn't come with some inconvenience to residents. Yeah. And it's it, and not doing something is inconvenience to, to everybody in Queens County who tries to use Route 18. Well, uh, we actually made the decision almost three months ago to do this, but the engineering from the state side, uh, the message boards, getting things prepared, getting the message out there that uh, these ramps are going to be closed at these specific times, takes time to plan. And you know what? And, and less traffic to start the pilot program to see what's going on. We're learning from that. We're learning from that. So there's nothing that says that maybe next uh, March, April, or May, we don't do this again with, with even heavier traffic to see the results. But uh, we, we, we want to be able to correct our mistakes and what we're doing and, and move forward from there. Yeah, and I liken it to if, if you ever see a restaurant opening, when they do the grand opening, mm -hmm. that's not the same day that they open the doors for the first time, right? You do a soft opening, you work, you find out where the kinks are, what you need to work out, and then you do your grand opening. So this rollout, I think doing it in September actually makes a little bit more sense because you can imagine if we did this 4th yeah. of July weekend, with huge traffic volumes, um, we would see some, a lot more problems on that. And so this also has us be able to better see how the local traffic patterns are, get those numbers for the cars that are going around. The, the state has counters, they're taking data out of this and learn from it. Like I said, there will be challenges and, and we're gonna learn from them. No, it is not guaranteed. We are working towards some sort of plan I mean, all the residents that live here for 10, 15 years, think back 10 or 15 years ago, there were no backups. You see what we're dealing with now, and it's only going to get worse in the next 10 or 15 years. We can't sit by idly and do nothing and try nothing. And that's what this is about. 
If there's a little pain that we all share, that's better than a lot of pain for 90% of us to share. There's also the issue of emergency services. So let's say you live down Route 8 like I do. The ambulance that we have in that area has already responded to a call and they're across the bridge bringing somebody to Anne Arundel County. You put in a call and now you need to get an ambulance there. We have to route it there from a different station. If the back roads are clogged up, um, that impacts their ability to get there. There's often fire calls, right? United Communities would normally be responding if you're on Southern Kent Island. Sometimes it's a big fire and additional, additional units have to be sent. We gotta get somebody from Kent Island Fire Department there. Sometimes Graysonville will respond to that area and other places. So with the volunteer firefighters, they gotta get to the firehouse, get the equipment, and then get to the call. And that can also be impacted with having the back roads clogged up. So part of this is not just so that people can move around on the side roads freely, but that's so emergency services can effectively respond. The emergency service had three calls right at the height of the uh, accident on the bridge, and one of them was the bridge. Uh, we, we got an email from them. They had no problem getting to the bridge. They, they thank us for that. Uh, they actually went up the Route 8 ramp and went down the other side of the ramp. The so state highway opened up the ramp for them when they saw them coming, and they went down the ramp. They had no delays, uh, and they had no problems with the plan that we had in place. There was some post I saw on social media where someone said, look, this ambulance is not able to get where they need to go because of the pilot program. Um, People will see something on social media and they'll post it as if it's true without having any background information on it. Um, we're highly attentive to making sure that we're in direct contact with the Director of Emergency Service to find out, is this true? What happened? What do we need to do? Um, what you saw on social media, this might be a bit of a shocker, but it's not all true. Um, so emergency services was able to navigate and it worked. kind of hoping that the traffic is heavy because we want to see those those heavy numbers and how this plan works. We'll take all that back. We'll, we'll analyze that. The State Highway will look at this with the numbers and uh, look at their algorithms. And then from there, we'll be ready for the town hall meeting to talk to the public again about where we're going from here. It Did it work? Are we going to move forward with this? Uh, what's the next steps? All these questions will be answered at the town hall. And I would, I would say, I think it's important to be um, there's a lot of sort of negativity bias out there about this, right? If somebody's inconvenienced by it, then they're going to look for everything negative about it. Mm -hmm. I would I would ask everybody to learn a little bit more. Thanks for watching this video. Watch the last commissioner's meeting where Commissioner Moran talked about the Beach to Bridge uh, plan. Uh, we talked in roundtable a little bit more about some of the questions that we hear. Give it a chance to get some data before we decide that there's a failure or a success, and, and let's see where that goes. Um, if you live east of Castle Marina Circle, um, and we have a large amount of traffic, don't expect the pilot program to clear right. the roads all the Queenstown. That's not what the pilot program is doing. We're just doing one segment of the plan right now. So if you are if you live in Graysonville and there are cars on Rudy Tain, that doesn't mean that the, the pilot program is failing. Um, it, if it's working between Route 8 and Castle Marina, that indicates maybe the pilot program is working and when we can extend it all the way up, then those who live in Graysonville in Queenstown, they'll get the same relief that the other segment is getting. So it's going to take some time. Um, and it's, it's not gonna be an easy process because we're, we're not just, we're dealing with changing travel behaviors. Mm -hmm. Some people use navigation software to get to the side roads. Some people have weekend homes down in Delaware or Ocean City and they take the side roads mm -hmm. automatically. It could take a while for them to, to recognize that the signs that say stay on 50 mean stay on 50 because you're gonna to have to turn around. We have to change those behaviors. Right now, this, this pilot program is, look at it as a phase one. Phase two would go from Castle Marina to the Kent Narrows, and phase three would go from the Kent Narrows all the way to the 5301 split. And again, with all this is gonna come out in the town halls. We encourage everybody to come, everybody to speak. We'll be putting those dates out here probably within the next 10 days, but it will be in November. We encourage everybody and anybody that has a great idea, pass it on to us, because you know we're, we're not sitting here with closed ears. We are uh, uh, analyzing everything and anything we can. Thank you. Thank you. To watch the entire video series, please head to the QAC-TV YouTube page. And while you're there, give us a like, a share, and subscribe so you can hear about all the wonderful things going on in this county. Thanks for watching.